Welcome back to this episode of Dicey Digest. I'm here today with Cody again, and we have a lot to talk about today. Yeah, for sure. There's so much been going on. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Because uh, you've had a lot to talk about. I've, I've had to tell Cody to, like, stop talking and save it for the podcast since we've been here. Also, but we're on such different, like, <laughs> algorithms of the internet that, like, the things I find insanely entertaining, you're like, Cody, shut up. I know, because he wants to talk about, like, streamers and stuff, and I'm like, that's not funny. Like, it's just not funny. Because I'm on TikTok side, and you're on, like, Twitch and, like, streaming, you know, like, all different yeah. types of platforms. Yeah, dude. I, I'm into all that content. I don't see, like... The most regular, like, girls' TikTok stuff. No, unless all. I show it to you. Some of them you think are funny. But yeah. I wanted to start off by talking about Drake Snake. <laughs> That's, like, <laughs> what's trending in the media today is Drake Snake. I, I think it's funny to say Drake Snake, because I hadn't heard that until you said it. Drake yeah. Snake. I had just seen, like, Drake's meat. <laughs> well, I was looking it up because, like, apparently a bunch of the people, like, that I follow on TikTok were talking about it. And they said that he leaked it himself. But I have it. I've been like googling and trying to figure out how it got leaked. Like, was it one of his girlfriends that leaked it, or did he? I don't leak know it? officially. Uh, I heard someone saying he's clearly he's laying in a bed on his private jet. He was on his jet. It was in a jet. That's what I heard. Obviously, I don't know. And he got that garden and hose out and started flopping it around. <laughs> uh, Cody said it's ten inches soft. Yeah, like <laughs> mid. He was only like I watched the video. I'm, <laughs> I'm like Drake's dick is out there. I'm looking. <laughs> Please. Wait, you can't cuss. We're still in the five minutes of the... <laughs> <Just kidding>. Drake's... <laughs> <laughs> dude. Yeah, no, dude. That was that was a lot. I saw it, and I was like, that's Drake? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's a fire video. That would work. A fire video? That shit would work. Yeah, for real, though. Yeah, so that was, that's been trending in the media. I was pretty shocked because whenever something like that gets leaked and it's real, like, usually it's, like, edited. Because recently, like, Taylor Swift's, like... Those were AIs. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were AI images. How were you already on that trend too? That was like two weeks ago. And they. And all the Swifties were getting mad trying to uh, dox the people that made it. Really? Mm -hmm. Did it look legit? Did you see them? No. I didn't see them either. No, I didn't care to look that up. I saw I saw a couple ones that were that weren't like uh, NSFW, you know, not safe for work. I saw a couple like normal ones. Is that what NSFW means? Not safe for work? Yeah, it's like a warning way of saying, like, this is pornographic. This isn't safe to watch at work. NSFW. I just, That's a thing from back in the day because people would be at work on, like, cubicles and stuff. And if you pulled something up, you're, like, the, the firewall would flag you. This happened to me. My mom had a corporate job for, like, 20 years, and I was, like, a 10-year-old with access to computers. She, put, she logged me in as her. I Googled the word porn. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously... All of a sudden, a firewall popped up, bleep, oh, like shutting this shit down. And then I was just like, got off the computer and act like nothing happened. And then like two days later, my mom came to me and she was like, so what were you doing? And did you, I was like, I searched car wrecks and it just came up, mom. I swear. <laughs> On her work computer? Yeah. Did she ever get in trouble with her job for that? No, she didn't get in no trouble. She, all she had to do was, my mom was the boss. All she had to do was go in there and say, it was my son. My son was trying to look like, at okay, porn. I'm don't sorry. Let, don't let your 10 year old on the computers anymore. You were 10 Googling that? Probably. Oh, my God. Yeah, but I'm just, but think about it. Like, this was like, we, we barely had access to I the know, internet. I know, I probably, so. like, whenever I was younger, too, I probably, like, that was the age whenever, like, I saw that stuff, too. Yeah, but it's curiosity crazy. killed the <laughs> You can't help it. I know, but it's crazy thinking that we have kids that are that age. Like, it makes me yeah, want to grow up. Yeah, my 12-year-olds had girlfriends. It's bad. Jalen's had a girlfriend for four years. The, yeah, they have, like, the most cute long-term relationship at this point. They're, like, best friends. I know. They're, like, actually best friends that like each other. You know? The other day, whenever we were getting Ruby, which is Jalen's girlfriend, uh, you know, her Valentine's Day gift, because Jalen wanted to get her, like, a Squishmallow and, like, a little cup and some Jaylen candy. Jalen has been going all out. I know. Like, a month in advance. Ever since she brought a I'm birthday like, present. Jalen, you're making me look bad. Yeah. Well, you never get me anything for Valentine's That's Day. That's not true. Yes it, yes, it is. We've missed a few. But, anywho, uh, he got her, like, the little Squishmallow in the bag, and we went and got it all together and stuff. And I was like, dang, Jalen, like, you know, you and Ruby have been together for a long time. And he was like, for life. And I was like, dang. 
I, okay. know, I remember you were telling me you were like you told him he needs to slow down. Buddy. Uh, yeah, I was like, like, calm down, sir. You're still ten. Yeah, you're ten years old. <laughs> I was gonna say though, on still on the the Drake leak. Uh, so do you know who Aiden Ross is? He's he's one of the Twitch streamers. So no. he, he's like the biggest streamer on Twitch, and then he moved over to like making his own platform. He watched like, he saw it like on he did it on stream with some of his friends they watched it and then he reacted to it and the, his first way of reacting was sending drake a voice message and he sent him he's like oh you're so blessed bro to be the number one performer you're so blessed to be you have all this great music you're number one and you're blessed to have a missile yeah. <laughs> I, wait i think i read something like that bro. on twitter whenever i was searching for the video the drake missile yeah because i was on live yesterday talking about the drake missile that's and everybody so was like, funny. where do I find it? Where do I find it? I was like, all I did was Google search Drake leaked nudes. And then it took me to Twitter. And then it took I me to I was going to say, yeah, it's, <clears throat> I've started to think of it as X now. But like, yeah, Twitter is where you can see literally anything. You can watch people get decapitated. You okay. can see anything. On you don't it. have to get so dark with it. But you, you know, like if there's something that like you're not supposed to see, it's on it. Do you have a Twitter? No. Oh. Just have the app. Me too. Yeah. I don't ever use it. I just have it for like. Drake replied to him, uh, that voice memo when he sent that to him, Drake replied to him, was like, dude, I'm about to use that as an album intro. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I didn't think that you used your Twitter anymore, but we both just have an account. No, I don't use it. Anymore. I only use it for, like, whenever I, I never learned how to use Twitter. Like, even back when Twitter was, like, trending and stuff. In, like, 2010. Right, like, that was before my curve. So, like, I never really tweeted. Like, I used to tweet, but not really. Like, I always was a Facebook and an Instagram type of person. I never really got into Twitter like that. Did you? No. Twitter's so stupid. Yeah. But I, I still it, think though. it's a stupid app. Like, sorry, Elon Musk, that you bought it. Like, it's a stupid app. People, I mean, people pop off on there, though. There's people who, will, like, really take that platform seriously and, like, make money on there. Like, like OnlyFans people. Oh, yeah. Because uh, there's no, it's kind of like Reddit in a way. You can post anything on Twitter. Right. I, that's what I'm saying, though. It's only, like, the fringe content. It's nothing, like, normal. I don't think there's anything normal on Twitter. It's like you go there for like fringe politics or like fringe porn. You don't like go on there to post like, you know, your family Nobody, photos. Yeah, nobody's doing that. There's still there's like, no like mom vloggers. There's mentally unwell people on that platform talking about Trump still. There's mentally unwell people still <laughs> talking about the vaccine. It's just a, a, a hellhole. <laughs> it's where all of the. <laughs> it's a terrible place. It's where people go to post and die. <laughs> it's literally terrible. One more thing I, I wanted to say, like, right away was today, we're just finding out this morning Toby Keith passed away. So, oh, like, yeah. RIP no, to Toby no, no. Keith. I found that out yesterday. I just saw it this morning. Yeah, I found out yesterday. Then I was I like, I was on live and they were like, Toby Keith passed away. And I was like, who's Toby Keith? Oh, so he died. I thought he died, like, uh, during the night last night. But I'm not really into country music. So I didn't, like, but I knew that I've heard the name before. Like, I, like, tr but I didn't know who it was. So then I got on my phone this morning and I saw that he's actually the one who signed Taylor Swift and the reason that she like came up. She Isn't was that like crazy? they were showing clips of Taylor Swift like he was 16. hugely influential. Whenever she was, you know, Taylor Swift has changed a lot. Like if you go back and look at photos of her, did you know she's a billionaire now? Yeah, full, well, yeah. full blown billionaire. She got paid like five hundred thousand dollars for the Eras tour, or like I think it was more than that. You mean million? She, I mean no, she. Oh, wait, no. I, dude, yeah, I keep fucking up. She owned that tour, so I know that she was spending over a million per show. She w she went out and paid, like, all of her truck drivers, like, $100,000. Yeah, $100, yeah like, she spent over a million, like, per show. How many? How much did she pay out on that Eras tour? Because I saw some numbers, like, how much did Taylor Swift pay out? Because she paid, like, each one of her staff members, like, the truck drivers. You know, she has, like, semi-trucks, like, following her. Yeah. Um, yeah, think about it pay employees i remember tour. when the weekend had a really big tour and it was a big deal because he made over like a hundred million dollars on that tour and i imagine taylor swift probably made like 500 million on this last tour because it was paid, so much bigger listen taylor shared the love by paying over 83 million dollars yeah, exactly. in bonuses to eras tour workers right that's what i'm saying when she did a show it, she put a million dollars out of pocket for all those shows Eighty-three million dollars just in bonuses. Yeah. That's wait, what I'm how saying. much? So wait, how much did the Eras tour did, make? Dude, it generated over a billion dollars, but it's expensive to do. I mean, I know people like you know Josie that works down at the cop. She had a ticket to the Eras tour that she like bought for a grand and ended up reselling it for six grand for one ticket. 
That's one nuts. ticket. One point. Wait, it's it was over a billion dollars yeah, that the Eras tour made. Right. A billion. A billy. Not even a milli, a billy. Right. That's like what I was saying with the weekend. It was like it wasn't his tour. He was like getting paid for it. He made a hundred million on the tour. But like Taylor Swift, she owns her shit. So it's like it was all hers. So she spent, you know what I mean? She had to spend five hundred million. Are you talking about the weekend, you said? Mm-hmm. Jalen has been wanting to go to a weekend concert so bad. And the only because he's a Fortnite character now. Well, the o- <laughs> kids think he's cool. Well, the only concerts that he's having is in Australia. That singer from Fortnite. <laughs> I want to see him. Meanwhile, I'm he- a motherfucking star boy. Yeah, ha, 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 yeah. He's got ha. a whole song about not being for kids. <laughs> oh my god. He got a. He won a Nickelodeon Teen Choice Award. He said, "I won a nickel on a song." He said, "I won the Nickelodeon Teen Choice Award t- for a song talking about doing blow." What song is that? He had the numb song where it's like, I can't feel my face. I can't feel my face. Yeah, it's talking about I being numb feel. on Coke. You know, they That's literally the whole point of the song. played that song. Yeah, you won a Teen Choice Award. The Glow Party at the kids' school. That was like the most poppin' song. This was like a couple years ago. It was whenever we all we took all the kids. And every kid in there knew the words to that song. They were like. The song's about cocaine addiction. That's hilarious. I didn't realize that, though, until you. T- I think I remember us having this conversation previously, but I didn't realize like that that's what that meant. I can't feel my mm, You hit a, a hit a note. Hit a note. <laughs> I can't feel my, my face when, when I'm with you. you. No, nah, my voice isn't great like but that. Do you think I could be a singer if I wanted to? Um, one more thing. I was gonna say, uh, rest in peace to Amani and you know, I hope you know, another Oh yeah. Uh, after mentioned Toby Keith that just made me think about that. It's like uh, you know, we had a tragic loss in our community, so you know, rest in peace to him and condolences to the family. Um Yeah. Gabby um did communi- communicate it with the family and was reaching out to them and talking to them and people were coming to our shop and yeah I don't think that you realize how like deep not and until sad I was that... in the store and yeah. I was looking at his picture and I'm looking at born in 2010 and I'm thinking about my son being born 2011 and being 12 and I just can't I can't imagine it and they had an even bigger family than ours and it's like we have a big family so we're close and I can't imagine having eight kids in a family and how close everyone must be. I and mean, then, dude, when I walk, so when I found out about now. it, when I found out, so there was a, what we're referring to is there was a 14 year old boy who was shot and killed like two blocks away from our storefront in Latonia. And when I found out about the shooting, cause I was at work that day, I saw it and I saw it go down <clears> and then the articles came out that it was a 14 year old. And so I was like, what the hell? So I, you know, I got in contact with the family, but the the saddest part for me was when I went over there to like drop off all the stuff before the funeral and like make sure the family had everything. And I actually like saw like I walked into their house and I saw as soon as I go in, there's like five kids just like all vibing. And I brought my cows with me, you know, and all the kids, they were like so vibing and like ready for these like cows. Like it was just like you could see like how much love was in that house. And that's what really made me like, oh, my God, they are never gonna feel that you know t- like we were talking about if we lost one of our kids like how do you come back from that like you I mean obviously you move on and stuff but it's like it's just as like it'll never feel the same you know and that's what the mom was saying like yeah some a part of you won't ever move on and it just sure. it, it that whole thing like that whole week of like all of that stuff it really made me like look at life a different way and being at that funeral like really made me like look at life a different way and like i bitch and complain about the stupidest shit like she, that's one of the things that the mom told me um but she was like you know i used to bitch and complain about him leaving his clothes on the floor and all this stuff she's like i would do anything to pick him up again and it really made me realize like i have to be thankful for you know every single day because you never know what can happen it really shifted my perspective on you know on life a little bit because yeah. if something can happen in a blink of an eye and change everything I know my my biggest fear is always about car wrecks, you know, because it's like the craziest thing that we all do as a society is drive cars around. Yeah, well, just like Kevin the other day, you know, Kevin was driving his car. There's a chair in the middle of the freaking road, and then all of a sudden he's getting slammed into a median. Yeah, so there's another thing uh, to move subjects with. So Kevin, who was on the podcast and runs our store for us, uh, he got into a car wreck. Like, was it two days ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's. And it's just out of nowhere. He was in the hospital for a while, and it's just like, dude, this stuff, it's crazy. Yeah. It happened any time to anyone. Thankfully, him and Kali were okay. But I've really gotten in a habit, and I'll put this out there for y'all to think about. I've gotten in a habit of, like, when a light turns green, I look for a second. Like, I literally, they're like, okay, green light. Look left. Look. I still, I'm like, I'm looking for cars. Dude, 
I'm a very me. defensive driver. I like if I know I'm getting ready to clear an intersection, like the lights green, I'm going to clear this intersection. I will literally let my car slow down some, and as I look, because I feel like that's the most dangerous thing is people running the red lights and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I just ran a red light the other day on accident. I didn't even realize that the the light had turned red. Yeah, it's happened to me too. And I was kind of like just like you know focusing on the road, and then I look up and I'm like, oh my fucking god! And then the cars were coming, and I was like, <gasps> but thankfully everything was okay. I didn't, you know. I right. had enough reaction time to, like, slow myself down. But still, like, it's scary. Like, and sometimes people don't even mean to, like, cause an accident. They're just, like, not paying attention. They just spaced out in the middle of driving and they'll burn a red light. I do the same thing. I stop now. Yeah, phones are a major problem now. Oh, do you, do you know how many people, like, young people especially I see driving down the road, literally, like, texting? Like, driving with their knees, texting? Yeah, I was on the highway taking the kids to school and somebody... I can't remember what she was doing, but it was like, what is this person doing? Yeah. And I got up and I pa- I went to pass her. I got next to her and looked over. She's just not even watching the road at all. Just so like, like literally watching a YouTube video. And I started blowing my horn and was like, you don't have to. I got yeah. mad, dude. Yeah. Because like, it's like you could literally hit a family. I'll take five seconds to try to change the song and feel like I'm not. Like, yeah. I'm, I can't pay enough like, attention. Ah. I'll be like, what song do I want to put on? And then it's just like not even worth it. It's yeah. Just like, it's literally not. I'll keep my, you know how my songs play on repeat. <laughs> I'll just yes. keep playing the same freaking song. I do know. Okay. Wait, I want to talk about you bringing home that freaking hamster. I love that hamster. Well, then how come you, you know what? Honestly, I still cannot like, if you guys knew Cody, The way that I do, like, he does not do things like, like, impulsive, like, bringing home a new pet. Like, you don't do that. Like, you would never do that. You're right. It's the only time I've ever done it. You would never do that, though. And it's because it's just a little freaking little squeak, squeak. It's just a little baby. So I had, like, the most stressful week of my life. No. I had the most stressful. (laughs) It's not funny. (laughs) Yes, it is. I had the most stressful. Acting like the gerbil was the freaking straw. It was the the straw. (laughs) It was the motherfucking straw. So I'm, like, having the most stressful week of my life. Like, the night before you brought home that little furry friend, I was ranting to you about, like, dude, I'm so stressed out. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't have enough time in the day to even, I do remember you were highly stressed out. Yeah, the night before. And that same day, I'm, like, at home, like, trying to, like, get the house together and stuff. And, like, you're, like, I have a surprise for you. So I think I'm getting, like, chocolate or something. I I think I'm getting something to eat. I did not say a surprise for you. I said I have a surprise. You can't be in a bad mood. I have a surprise for you. You can't be in a bad mood. That's what you said. So I think I'm Me about to Haven get a snack. Me and have a surprise for you. That's not what you said. You said, I have a surprise for you. So I'm home, stressed out, scrubbing the kid's bathroom floor. Here comes you with boxes. And I look over, and it's a hamster cage. It was pretty funny that you were, like, uh, anxiety. What's that called when you're, like, stress cleaning? I wasn't stress cleaning. You're that like bathroom stre- was filthy. Listen, you were, like, <laughs> stress cleaning the kid's bathroom, which is, you know, stress, you know. And I'm walking by with a, a hamster thing. <laughs> You're like, you know, mad. <laughs> oh, no, dude. then Haven, like, that's the first time <laughs> that I've ever not been excited for her. I know. I've, I'm usually like the kid's hype man. Like right. 20- You're usually one of the kids. I expected you to fully be just like any of the kids and be stoked about this hamster. And you showed me that cage and I was like, there's no fucking way. And then right behind you, here comes McKinley with, with a box, mouse like, box. And I'm like, no. No, absolutely not. And I just went back to cleaning. Gabby had to leave for Jalen's workouts and then come back like five hours later to then she was okay and acknowledged the hamster. You went in there and gave him some blueberries. Yeah. I had to take a second, though, because I was pretty pissed. So my thing with it was um, Haven's been asking for this for a hamster or a guinea pig or a gerbil for years now. So is Jalen with a lizard. And that's another reason that I was mad. Was because Jalen, for a long time, I've taken him to reptile conventions. Mm-hmm. We, you know, when we have four kids and but they all Jaylen want a different pet. Jalen lives with us full time. He doesn't leave. <coughs> like, that's the point. That was always the problem with Haven being a split custody kid. That's why her mom wouldn't get her a hamster. And that's why mm-hmm. I always put off the hamster was because she spends up to five days at a time at her mom's house or at my house. And she's not at the other one. So it's like, you know, how are we going to get you a hamster? You're not going to be here for five days. You know, but so I finally gave in. I, at this time, I was like, look. I'm going to man up. I will take care of this hamster fully while you're not here. I was like, it'll be bonded with me, too. I, I liked it after, you know, I, it all makes made sense after. I just wish you would have gave me a phone call. Like, heads up. I know you're already me, in a pissy mood. Me and McKinley mood. didn't have a heads up. We were literally uh, 
just like trying to figure out something to do and she like doesn't need anything you know so we're like we go in she's like let's go into pet smart and like pet the animals or whatever i was like girl i don't think that you could pet anything in pet smart i'm like you're thinking of like you know feeder supply or the other ones where you can pet them the chickens and stuff right or that's tractor supply yep and uh she's trying to tell me about one she went to where you can pet them and stuff so we're in there looking at them and i'm like i'm looking at them they're like this big and they're twenty dollars I'm like, this isn't even like a, a big thing. It's not even a big deal. It was a hun- it was a hundred dollars, a little less than a hundred dollars for like the whole cage, him, some bedding, everything. Yeah, I was like, it's the work that goes into keeping them alive. Like they still are like animals. I've had them. I've her. It's a her. I've had her name Sky. I've had Sky out of her cage and in a hamster ball every single day. I've been going in there. She already will take food out. She'll come right up to me like when I like when I go in there and I'll say Sky Sky like at her crate because she's burrowed. She's made <laughs> Sky a whole- Sky. Yeah, I know. I'm being cute with it. She's <laughs> turned all of her bedding in the bottom. It's got she's got two stories. She's turned the whole bottom one. She put all the bedding to the back and burrowed out a cave, which yeah. is like so cool. Hamsters do that all the time. Though. Yeah, it's just like she would do. I don't. Uh, in the, it's just like she would do in the wild. They make their own little cage, but yep. I think that it's... she'll hide in there, and I'll go in there, and I'll say sky, sky, and then she she'll <laughs> peek out, see me, and then she'll come up to greet me and stuff. And then now I've got she'll take grapes or strawberries right out of my hand. She is so cute. When McKinley left to go back to her mom's, because you bought her like know, the day I know on a day where she was leaving the next day. So McKinley's for only seen days. her for one day, and now I've had the hamster for five days. Well, no, it was funny because I was texting McKinley after she left because she like left a bunch of stuff at your mom's house, and I was having to go br- drop it off. And that same night, you were we were texting her the pictures of the hamster, you know, of us, like, playing with the hamster and the ball, and you were sending her videos, and she's like, I don't want y'all to have this much fun with my hamster. Like, why are y'all <laughs> messing with my hamster? Because she's hit me up daily for pictures right. and updates and, you know, how Sky, she'll literally text me from school, like, she, at lunch or whatever, she'll text me, and, uh. I sent the first day, I was like, you know, I sent her some pictures and then I had got the hamster ball and I sent her a video of Sky running in the hamster ball and <laughs> me and Zelma were all giddy and happy. And she's like, you guys are having way too much fun with my, she emphasized it. She's Capital like, M, Y, 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 Y. With my hamster. <laughs> it's like, well, girl, we want me to do it. We got to play with We got to take care of this thing. Yeah, I can't just leave her in here. Okay, wait, not to change subjects abruptly, but I definitely want to talk about our journey quitting vaping. And I'm I still wanna, on the journey. I haven't vaped since December 10th, I think. Which is insane for me because it yeah. makes me want to l- literally jump off of a bridge whenever you, okay, because I wanted to quit vaping first. This was my pro. This was my project, like mm-hmm. the quit vaping project. Yep, I was not on that. You were not on it. And I was like trying to convince you, like whenever I was hardcore trying to stop, I was like, I really need you to do this with me. And you're like, not ha- like, it's just not happening. Like I'm not there yet, whatever. So then I'm having a really hard time even like committing to it because like I'm by myself and everybody around me vapes and like I'm addicted to nicotine. And yeah, then no, all of our you wake, employees no. vape, Hold on, wait. friends vape. You wake up one morning. No, that's not, I was sick. Oh yeah. We had the, we, that's, that's what how, it was. What I got happened. the, that's what happened was I got the flu and when I would cough, my chest would feel like it's literally on fire. And you had already been, you had been trying to, sorry, you had been trying to quit vaping for a while. And then I got sick. We both got sick. And I was like, okay, I'm done. I literally, from one day to the next, was done with it. Yeah. I was, I haven't touched one since. Yeah. But it was, it was literally because I couldn't breathe. I got the flu and couldn't breathe. I was like, oh, this has to end. I was like, I'm too old. Well, that's what happened. We got the flu and then you woke up one morning and you were like, hey, like, no, this was you. But I am dipping Zen pouches. Hey, I'm buying a, I'm buying those Zen pouches and I'm quitting. And I was like, what? And you're like, they're like these uh, free and clear nicotine pouches. Like, I'm going to do it that. It is. It's literally just a nicotine that you're putting into your body. And so I'm like, okay, like, let's see how long this lasts for. Because, like, you just didn't want to quit with me a couple weeks ago. Well, right. you, you quit and you have not hit the vape since. Not even. Like. Nope. I've even, I, uh, I accidentally put Kevin's in my pocket one day leaving the shop. Didn't even mean to, just like out of habit of like grabbing my things. I didn't even notice I did it. I got in my car leaving, hit my pocket. I was like, no way that's a Mr. Fog. <laughs> Pulled it out, Mr. Fog, sat that bitch down, called Kevin and was like, bro, I'm coming back. Come get your shit. Yeah. No, I only one time wanted to strangle a kid in the grocery store. He was like 16. I didn't really want to strangle him, but he was hitting, he hit a vape behind me in the grocery line and I almost tackled him for the vape. <laughs> I was like, about, I was like, oh. I will go into the store and harass Kevin for his vape. I know. Like, I it's will be insane. like, let me, and if he doesn't let me hit it, I'll I took be a like, picture like a week ago of you hiding your, sorry, of you hiding your vape in the fridge. That is not what happened. 
You sh- you know that you stressed me out that morning, and I put that was, I was the hamster day. Yeah, that hamster was hamster day. You put a vape in the fridge because I'm. Ar- I told you I was already stressed out. You come home with a freaking hamster, and then I'm trying to like get out of the house. And my mind after that hamster came into the house, when I tell you my mind went to shambles. I couldn't remember where I put my vape. I knew I hid it from myself, and I put it in the fridge. You've come home with dogs that you knew about. Like it was a conversation. Like I didn't know about the cats like that. They yeah, you were, did. You went with me to get Leo, and then I rescued Mimi out of my grandma's engine bay. Yeah, oh, it was Mimi and Chanel at the one point. We had a cat that Chanel, ran away. You came with me for Chanel. When we lived in North Carolina, we had a cat that literally ran away. You were a part of every single animal getting process. No, but I'm saying you're talking about like you'll force us into another animal that lives for 15 years and needs like care like the way a child does, like a whole family member. I came home with a hamster, dog. With no phone call, no warning. Yeah. But so uh, all the kids are litty. Um, I felt like McKinley just seemed sad the day before, and I was just like, something. Let's get her a hamster. Yeah, you know. You I mean? with your daughters. Just brighten her life up. You with your daughters She is... texted me last night. I know. I'm, I'm a girl dad. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm a pretty good boy dad, too, to mm-hmm. be fair. But, like, I'm extra girl dad. Um. McKinley texted me last night, and she was like, hey, I love you. And I was like, I love you too, girl. And she was like, I miss you so much. I can't wait to come see you in Sky tomorrow. She probably loves that hamster. Probably telling all of her friends about it. You she know? has, yeah. She's she, was just telling her friend, she was telling her friends that day. But she also, like, she didn't even, it's literally an adorable hamster. Like, it's solid white with just straight gray ears. The only thing that's not solid white on this hamster is gray ears. So we'll it's insert like, a picture of Sky. Yeah, it's the cutest hamster ever. It really is. It is a cute hamster. Um, oh, but again, though, with the quitting vaping, it, another thing about it, like, I'm, like, it wasn't just me getting sick and my lungs being on fire. I thought about it. I thought about when I was a child and with my mom smoking cigarettes, and she was always trying to quit, and she couldn't. She would try to quit. She'd have, like, something would happen. She'd be right back to smoking, and it was a problem. And then fast forward to me, 13 years old, boom, I picked the cigarettes up and I started smoking. And I smoked from 13 till I joined the army and then I dipped the whole time in the army. And then I started smoking the vape after the army. And it was always a struggle with addiction uh, for me too. And I was like, I can't keep being an influence like this around my kids. Like, like, like oh, I can't quit. Sorry, guys. You know what I mean? Like, sorry. Because like, my kids were so excited when I told them I was quitting. And they would be checking up on me and asking me, how many days is it? Yeah, and McKinley would be like, day number eight without dad having a vape. Gabby, what day are you on? And I'm like, girl, don't even talk to me about it. I mean, they were telling people. Like, they would be excited to be like, oh, dad quit vaping. Like, and it's, it, honestly, dude, and that, that made me happy. That was a reward in and of itself. And I wasn't going to go through, like, the I can't quit shit with them. I, was, I just don't want to be that type of, I don't want to be that influence on them. I don't want that shit. I want them to know that that shit's not good and I don't like it. Well, yeah, I mean, but even me, I've had a conversation with Jalen, like, since I've been trying to quit, which I think that I have, like, it's been a couple of days for me now where I haven't hit a vape. Like, nice. I've been using the Zen pouches, too, which they kind of suck. Like, I, as a girl, it's harder to, like, quit and use the Zen pouches because I just feel like. A little more of a stigma. Well, on no, it just the the Zen pouches are like so manly. Like I feel like I'm back in the motor pool. I mean. Like I used to dip when I was in the army. I know. <laughs> like I used to like put Copenhagen in you my lip. You in a motor pool with all dudes, so it's like you're just a product of your environment at that point. Yeah. So like you know, I was smoking my Marlboro NXTs, and I was throwing some Copenhagen in my lip during the day to get me through while I'm working on cars. Like that shit is crazy. You'll be to look dying back of at. boredom when you're in the military. I, that's and out like, of boredom, you will do anything. Well, yeah. I mean, like, smoke breaks, you got a break. So I'm right. going to smoke that cigarette. And I was, I've was i been addicted to nicotine since I was probably, like, 16 years old. Yeah. Like, I started vaping when I was 16. Then I went active duty. And then I started smoking cigarettes at 17. And I was smoking all the way until I got pregnant with Zelma. Then I quit. Yeah. Then I was, you know, after I had Zelma, it was, like, a year, I think, started vaping again. And then I just couldn't knock it because it's such, like, a... It's that repeated, yeah, I don't know. People call that an oral fixation. Yeah. But it, it's the addictive personality, which me and you both have too. Oh, you know yeah. What I mean? It's a problem for a lot of people. Yeah. That's another thing that, you know, we wanted to talk about was like overall us caring about our health more. Like yeah. recently, like me and you have both realized that like, you know, the way that we eat really affects us. Like us eating out so much affects us. Like 
you know, also like not wanting to drink as much. Like before it's so much, it's so easy to like pick up a drink, like at the end of the day or like, you know, wanting to have a drink cause you've had a stressful day or something, but that shit really does affect you. Like it really affects your health. Like for real, for me at least, like it does. if I get into a routine where like I'm having a super stressful week and I drink like two, three drinks at the end of like two, three, four days out of the week, I, that, I think it like ruins my brain a little bit because I, I'm it like does. foggy. I feel less motivated. I feel sluggish. I feel like I, I'm like slowing down. I can't focus. I can't concentrate. Like, and I already can't concentrate because I'm pretty sure I have undiagnosed ADHD. But like, just like us wanting to take care of our health more has been like huge. Yeah, I definitely got into a habit of drinking too much at night. Um, that was kind of like my way of unwinding. I got into like a two month period of like drinking every single night, and. Yeah, dude, it, if it messes with everything, it, it's like uh, it'll put you into like a the next day you're in a depression. And I remember when we were in the army and they were always preaching about drinking to everyone. Uh, they would say like when you drink, it takes 48 hours for your body to like recover from because alcohol is poison. Yeah. And it takes a long time for your body to recover and it takes your brain a while to recover. And there's just there's it's hard to form good habits, but there's just so much better stuff that you can be doing with your time. Yeah. I mean, I still, but don't get me wrong. Like, I love a good drink. Like, I love a good margarita. Yeah, I'm not saying people need to not drink. But I feel like I just, like, I need to limit myself more than I have been because whenever I, even if it's just, like, you know, Wednesday night and I'm like, fuck, it's been a stressful day. I want a couple drinks. And then the next day, I feel like I'm like, I suffer from that. So that's why I'm trying, like, personally, I've been trying to, like, limit it to, like, okay, well, what am I doing the next day? Like, planning it to, you know, if I'm going to have a drink, I want to have, like, a good time with it. Yeah. I don't want to just drink because I'm stressed out. I want to drink because I'm celebrating something or I'm having I'm, – I'm in a good mood when I'm drinking. I don't want to associate drinking to I'm having a bad day. I want to drink. No, like, I want to be like, oh, we're going out. We're having fun. Let's have a drink. Like, yeah. you know, does that make sense? Like, Yeah, instead of a stress reliever, which is, you know, you can find a million other things to do. It's just, it's a, like you said, a, a stimulant for good times and stuff. Yeah. Like, I want to use it to, like, amplify a good time rather than, like, trying to cope with, like, this shitty day that I've had. My, I find my biggest motivation in, in the way I'm uh, influencing the kids. So oh, I don't yeah. want to be an influence of, like, it's what adults do. Well, no, I because our kids are at the age now where they are monitoring everything that we're doing. Like if I'm buying a bottle of wine at the store, Jalen is like, what do you need that for? And it's like, cause I need a damn he stays drink, boy. On your ass. Dude, Jalen stays on my, like, I can't leave the house without him being like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Like we were home alone the other day, me, Jalen, Zelma, mm -hmm. whenever you went to Elijah's game and I went upstairs and I was just going to my room for a little bit. Like mom, Ma, worry, what are you doing? Come back down here. Come back. Down. Like, he stays on my ass. For real. He is always in my business. <laughs> and on the flip side of that, my problem with, like, Elijah is that he likes what I do. Like, like if I'm mm -hmm. doing something, he's like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, that's like, you know what I mean? He's into it. So, it's that I need to be better around him so he's not, like, seeing the bad influence. Yeah. I feel like me and you are trying to break story. a bunch of, like, cycles. Yeah, we are. Um, I have to say, I have a terrible story about that. We, uh, at the, when me and Elijah went to Miami at the airport, we were, we were flying back and I went up to the bar to get a drink and he, he, he told her like, yeah, screwdriver, orange juice and Tito's. I was like, <laughs> he knows what daddy likes. He likes the orange juice with some Tito's. That's what it makes a house do. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not as bad as my dad. My dad literally sent us a video of oh, Zelma. <laughs> Sitting at the bar, can I get a bourbon on the rocks? Like yeah. teaching her how to order a bourbon on the rocks, which my dad never drank until he retired and moved up here. And now yeah. he's a bourbon connoisseur. I think he, I need to get him like a special like shelf made for all the bourbon bottles he's collected. I mean, he probably has a couple hundred, maybe even a thousand dollars worth of like bourbon that he's collected. Oh, I thought you were going to say a couple hundred bottles. Oh, no. <laughs> like a. Uh, he has, like, an expensive collection. Like, these are, like, For sure. And aged. It's, he's been going to – so, Kentucky is where bourbon is made. So, it's bourbon-barreled whiskey here in Kentucky. And uh, I think he's just gotten into kind of the culture of it. And, like, he's been going to breweries and, like, actually meeting the people that make it. My dad deserves that shit. 
Yeah, he's having fun with it. He's doing it in a in a cool way. Yeah. He's not just like a sad drinker at home. No, you he's know, like his life's messed up. Yeah, yeah. He's actually like uh, made Studying a hobby out it. of it. Yeah, he's got a hobby out of it. Reading the history of it. Like, this bourbon right here is from this and this and And I this. went to the brewery down in Bardstown. And guess what I found out? They have. 179 barrels like, and it's not like that's his only hobby either he's picked up like he's swimming all the time he goes you know what i mean he yeah. works out and uh shoot he's looking into getting into horse riding soon yeah no he wants to yeah once Zelma goes to school and like he doesn't have as much to do like well he's always gonna have stuff to do with the kids but he wants to start like working part-time at like a horse ranch mm-hmm. and like cleaning the manure or the poo-poo out of the stalls as, like, a job. Like, he just wants to be around it's a, horses. It's a side quest, yeah. He's, yeah. he's doing side quests now. And he wants to do horseback riding with Zelma, too. But I want to do that. I want to get... Because I did horseback riding for, like, yeah. competitively for, like, right. a while. Yeah, Zelma would be super into it, I think. I used to be a horse girl. Did you know you're married to a horse girl? Honestly, no, not really. Was I it used all, to like, be... before you were 13? Like, uh, yeah. somewhere in there. Things went south, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the tra- tra- trajectory changed. <laughs> yeah. I went from, like, innocent horse girl. My parents are, like, 50 with a 10-year-old. Like, you know. Right, yeah, which is part of the issue, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But um, to, be, Being a little out of touch. Yeah. To being, like, 13. And now I'm a mom. Let me get my shit together. Whereas, like, with us, we are... All in our kids' business. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, my parents... And we get it, too, though. Like, I, I get, like, what a... I kind of relate to, like, what a 12-year-old or a 10-year-old's thinking right now or going through. Me, too. Me I'm and Jalen are, like... myself in those shoes. I mean, that's what people don't understand about, like, me and Jalen's relationship, too, is that we are... Four, or not 14. We're almost 14 years apart. We're 13 and some change apart. But even though we go at it like siblings, like, I understand him more than, like, you know my parents do or like more than somebody older would just because we are so close in age and we might go at it like siblings, but we have like such a, a close, same with you and your kids though. I would say when I was born, my grandparents were 50, not my parents. Yeah. Right. And they would have been, and they would have been, you know, out of touch, like with certain things as a kid. You know what I mean? They wouldn't get it. My parents still don't get a lot of stuff. That's what I was thinking. It's it's kind of like the difference between like when a parent is trying to explain to a grandparent that a kid is 11 and doesn't want to just, you know what I mean, do a certain thing. Like they want to go have fun. Yeah, I wanted to talk about being a homeowner really quick. That shit's pissing me off. Yeah, it can be a struggle in and of its own. It's so, yeah. <laughs> go but ahead. we didn't get like a... We didn't, <laughs> we didn't buy, like, a brand-new built home. Tell me where there's some brand-new built subdivisions around Northern Kentucky, please. Name a couple. Well, no, yeah, you got to get out past the 275 loop. You got to go, like, out into the country. You got to yeah, go now, out. And now it's, like, union. So our house was built when? I don't even know. It's, like, 50-something, 1950-something. So our house was built in the 50s. No, it's older than that, actually. Is it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was built in, like, the... I don't know, but it's old as fuck. I think that's when our neighborhood went up is in the 50s. Our house used to be a duplex, and it was converted into a single family. So we closed on our house in October. So we've only, uh, well, but like we talked about this last night, too. So we've been a homeowner technically for. Like about a year and a half now. A year and a half, but we've been responsible for the property for a year and a half now, but we only just closed on it. We closed on it in October. Yeah. So like we've been responsible. So as soon as we move into this house, it's like a couple that's getting divorced and like. They couldn't afford the house anymore, so they had to sell it. So we're looped into this, like, you know, for rent to own. Then we end up closing on the house in October. But we've been responsible for this property since we signed, like, our rent to own. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as we move in, a couple months later, it's right. It's about to get cold because we moved in in October of 2022. And then we closed exactly a year later because that's the plan. We closed on time, which is crazy. Anyways. So um, we move in, and there's no landlord to call. Like, when you own a house, like, you are responsible for everyone. I don't know, like, what the best plumber is. I don't know who the best HVAC is. I don't know what anything. And I, I'm, you know, not that I'm proud of it, but I'm about as far as it gets from a handyman. Bitch. I'm about as far removed from handyman as possible. I, I don't ever I grew up like... with my single mom <laughs> who had two handyman brothers that could come over and do everything. Meanwhile... Even today, if my mom has a problem at her house, she's not calling me. She doesn't call me. She calls her brother. You'll come over there and fix that she shit. She does call you to, like, build stuff. You're really good at building shit. 
And you know the craziest part about That's you? That's just something that y'all don't want to do. Y'all give me that project because y'all don't want to do it. That's why y'all have me assemble all the things. I know you were raised by a single mom who, like, you know, whatever, but... Worked an office job. And meanwhile, your dad school. can do anything. Yeah, 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 but... Like, I could call your dad t- <laughs> tomorrow and be like, I need you to build couldn't me... Couldn't do much from prison. <laughs> Don't think he was working on many projects in prison. Dude, okay, but I could call your dad tomorrow and be like, listen, I need you to build me a boat. He would be like, I get me some two by fours. I get me some waterproof it. barrier. I was gonna say it'll have eight holes in it. He doesn't have a country accent. I don't know why I always give him a country accent whenever I'm like, rawr, 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 and he does not have a country accent at all. Yeah. No, that's just you doing your your blue collar handyman voice. I'm a blue collar working man. But wait, hold on. Okay, so back to home ownership, right? Like, so we move into our house. First thing, I have a fucking list on my phone of the shit that's gone wrong. Move in. For me, I'm just like, one thing goes wrong. I got I to gotta pull up a YouTube video. I got to watch a YouTube video on how to fix this. I got to go get the tools for it. So it's like, it's a whole nightmare. I'm like, I need like two, three days and a whole budget to fix anything. So it's like, it becomes more practical to just literally yeah. have a handyman. Like, that we're can not come having Cody everything. fix nothing because he's like, I need a whole day. Like, and it's like, bro, never mind. The I'll one just time somebody. when we lived in Daniel Street and I, uh, my mom's old house and, uh, I recocked our shower. Like I did such a bad job. I recocked it after. I ripped everything that you did out and then I recocked it. See. That's my point. Cuz it this was like point. you left it like how? And but- even when even when I was working uh in electric, it's like it's not like you don't build shit. Like we're like running wire and like terminating cables and like setting up a you know, a circuit breaker box or whatever. Like, it's not real. Like, electricians are not, like, real construction workers. They're, like, the fancy guys of construction workers. Yeah, but you can't fix nothing They're the passenger the princesses of every construction site. Listen, so when we first moved into our house, the AC and the furnace went out. Like, our AC was not working, and then the furnace went out. I think that it was, like, $8,000 to just get a new furnace and a new AC. So that our, But we didn't do that right away because we had just, like, put all this money down on the house and like all this stuff. So we were using space heaters for a while, which racked up our electricity bill to almost like $800 a month. Yeah, literally like spent our savings to get into the house. Well, not necessarily, but we spent a lot and I wasn't trying to like spend another eight grand right away. Like I was like, dang, I need to get my bread back up. Yeah. So we threw in some space heaters for a while. So then I was like, well, damn, I I mean, I'm paying $800 a month in electricity now. Because of it being a duplex, it has two thermostats and so there's two heating and cooling systems for the house because of the way it was set up as a duplex um so our upstairs had heat and our downstairs two floors did not so we had to run space heater 24 7 then then we were good we were free and clear for a little bit did other we do than, the fence before that i think um, the first thing we did was put in our privacy fence no uh, it was one, of, the, one not, of those two was right it was away. first we did the ac okay anyways then we pay for um the privacy fence which that was like a luxury that was so that we could keep the dogs in the backyard but like yeah. we're responsible for that i think that was another like no it was only four grand which yeah. isn't only but it's a pri- it's a nice ass fence like and it keeps the coyotes out of our yard because we have hella coyotes yeah, just well, think in most situations when you when you know when you live the w- the way most Americans are living right now, like where do you come up with these random huge sums of money? To, you That's know? what I, okay. So like if my job wasn't as like, I don't know if lucrative is the correct term, but if my job wasn't like, Oh, if I work harder and I do more, I can make more money. Right. Like yeah. if I, if I do some extra shit, if I take on some extra brand deals, whatever, I can make more money to like pay for these extra expenses. But like exactly. for people who are living with fixed incomes, like for example, like my dad, like whenever he was a college professor and he was a college basketball coach, he was on a salary. He never made extra money unless it was like he was doing a summer camp and like he was, you know, hosting kids for the summer. Like right. that's how he made his extra money. So like for people who are living on a fixed income, like salary basis, how are they paying? Like I, it blows my mind because like we have expenses pop up all the time and we're like, damn, like. Yeah, it'll come out of nowhere is the problem. Out of nowhere. And it's like, how are people who are living like. You always see people talking about it. They're like, oh, as soon as you think you're getting caught up, here comes the check engine light. Here comes your taxes. Yeah. IRS, ding, 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 motherfucker. I want my money. A lot of people that, don't relate to that issue. They that see could. the taxes coming out of their checks. A lot of people don't relate to, at the end of the year, the government being like, hey, oh my God. knock, knock, like you've been having fun all year? The uh, IRS. Uh, you've been having fun? Did you say They're some? like, you know what? We're going to send you a letter that if you don't respond to us, we're going to start like seizing your bank accounts. 
But it's like, bitch, I, I've been paying you. What are you talking about? Then they make me wait eight or not eight hours. Sorry, that's a, that's a stretch. Four hours. That's not a stretch. I have a screenshot of that shit on my phone. I remember. Four hours on hold to talk to the higher up of the higher up of the higher up of the higher up to, to whatever the fuck with my taxes, dude. Anyways, home, home ownership. Yeah, Fuck then the IRS. IRS motherfucker want to get smart on the phone. Like, you know, you owe some money. It's oh, like, oh, well, why oh, do you really? think I'm calling you right now? <laughs> oh, oh, I really? know. But I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how to pay it. Because the online portal's not fucking working. Sorry. I mean, like. Not a problem you can relate to, huh? So then, so then the pipes burst in our kitchen because our toilet <laughs> fucking pl- plugs, right? Like, our water's not draining right, and then all of a sudden... But, no, seriously, the people before us messed up the plumbing. There was some illegal plumbing in our basement, and so none of the plumbing drained right, and so we've had to have a plumber come in and, from the upstairs, snake our fucking drain out to the street. I'm talking, like, 200 foot of snake drain down out to the street. Well, no, but it was like, well, you know, everything is fine. We know our toilet and our water isn't draining. We thought maybe we might... I, I had you get me some Drano, dump some Drano down that hoe. Then all of a sudden, and I think that Drano is what busted that pipe. Now that it, I think it ate through. The next one of the a couple of days later, Jalen's you know gaming it up on the Fortnite, and then he's like, "Mom, I the about ceiling's it. leaking I'm in the kitchen." And I go down there, I run down there, and I'm like, "Oh my god, it's just dumping water down all over the place. It's poo poo water, just all in our kitchen where we cook all of our meals." And, um, horrific. They, we had to get a plumber out there to cut our ceiling open. Well, no, the handyman came out to redo the drywall and the pipe right there and everything. He had to have, he had to call back up. He had to call a real plumber to come out to snake our. It was his brother. That's so funny. That it was his brother. Italian as fuck. I got nine kids. Dude. He was cool as fuck though. He was a really cool guy. Really, then, really kind. And then, I won't say which one because it could be embarrassing. One of our kids takes dumps the size of a grapefruit and clogs the toilets once a week. Don't be talking about him like that. <laughs> no, I didn't say Leave him. my son alone. <laughs> you know, you see, look, someone's going to pull this up in 10 years and be like, yo, I heard you take grapefruit dookie stuff. <laughs> he thinks it's funny, though. Yeah. Yeah. He's got no shame in his game. So, you know, yeah, one of our kids clogs the toilet on a weekly basis, like right now. We have a to- clogged toilet. That was your daughter, Zelma. So. Okay. And then after the pipes burst in the kitchen, we had to replace a door. That was like a grand, which was crazy. And then we had to get a security system, you know? So, that, like, all this stuff that goes into just having, like, a functioning home is, like, so expensive. And it's made me want to go live off grid. Like, I want to just buy an RV. But then with my luck, I'd buy an RV that doesn't have AC. Then we have a landscaper. Thankfully, that's not a bill in the winter. But in the summertime, landscaper. Yeah, but, you know, that's like, that's like, we were just talking about cutting grass. (laughs) Remember the conversations we had about, like. No, listen, yeah, at some point, you run out of time for the the little things. Like, it's like, we have four kids and we're working. It's like. Kids and work, and then there's a lot, there's not much time left after that. Mm-mm. So it's like, you want to cut the grass, or do you want to be out earning money? When you, when you level up to a certain point in life, that's what me and Cody <clears> were talking about. Like, you have to spend money to keep yourself, like, able to have time for those things that make you money. And, like, you know, time is very valuable. Time with the kids. Yeah. So, like, paying somebody $60 a week to come cut our grass, you know, plus a tip or whatever. Like, let's say, yeah, like, it's, it's like 60 bucks a week, right? Is that how much you pay? Yeah. So it's like $60 a week to cut our grass. That saves us a whole day of work. Like, yeah. that means that we can, like, take our kids to do something fun or, like, just relax. Imagine or, like, a work. weekend day where we don't have two sporting events and, like, our kids want to see never their heard friends. Of I've you never. I, mean? I like, haven't we, seen uh, a day that our kids haven't had sports, friends, or something to do in years. Yeah. I mean, in between four kids, it's like there's something every day. Yeah. It's all week, multiple things on the weekend. It's like, so my, so my cousin Chris is getting married this weekend, and I'm in the wedding. I'm one of the groomsmen. And so it's like there's been, like, three dates that I had to be available for, it, and then plus the wedding. Well, even just the wedding day is on a day where my daughter has a, <laughs> Competitive cheer, cheer. a cheer competition. I heard she has, like, they have, like, four a year. They're big deals. Same day as the wedding, and and not only that, my son's basketball team is in their playoffs. Championship, yep. The champ, they're in the playoffs right now. Uh, for 
this for the regionals here. And uh, if they win Thursday, they play the championship game this weekend. So it's like there's a ch- my son's championship basketball game, my daughter's cheer, which I could go to both of those. They're they're separate. They're far enough apart. If it, but then there's the wedding that I'm a groomsman in. Yeah. So it's like picking up a one single thing, like like adding something to our schedule literally shifts everything and starts screwing with the way that like, you know what I mean? It starts screwing with everything else. Yeah, we have too many kids. I wanted to talk about Gypsy, Gypsy Rhodes Blanchard before we end this too. Mm. Um, I forgot she existed. I feel like she was in the news for a day and okay. then now everybody's over No, it. no, no. She was, she's still in the news and she's still living her best life. You can't tell me nothing. Like she's still, she's doing her thing. But there's like it some things. It ain't gonna things. last. Listen, there's some things. And people are starting to see through her shit. Exactly. Right? Thank you. I, wanna, I saw through it when you told me about her. Yeah, well, no, you didn't even know about her whenever we first talked about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Right. But um, I told you about her. I gave you. Then you start digging into it. So first of all, she does an interview recently, and she's pretty much like, "I don't think I'm a murderer. Like, I didn't murder anybody. Like, he's the one who did it. Like, but she's the one who orchestrated the whole thing. Orchestrated the whole thing. So she. Yeah, that's the classic mafia excuse. Yeah. I had someone else do it. But the thing is, is if you see the interviews of her ex-boyfriend, like the one who actually carried out the crimes and stuff like that, he, uh, not that there's something wrong with him. Thank you. Um, I guarantee you he's mentally unwell, very unwell, like needed to be in therapy. And instead of in therapy, he was seeing that girl. And he was probably obsessed with her. Like if you have something wrong with you and you have like a really like, not to say a crappy life. Classic incel thing. Yeah, like, you know, you, you probably have a rough home life, like, and then you find someone who loves you and who's giving you that attention and, you know, who you're sleeping with and all of these things. And she's like, my mom is doing all these things to me. Like, I want her gone. I want her dead. Well, then now it's like it all comes back on him. He's serving a life sentence. He's never going to get out of jail. Right. And he's, and it, yeah, dude, literally cost him his entire existence, his whole life wasted. Boom, gone. I know. I feel kind of weird about the whole thing because I, whenever she was first getting released from jail, I was like, oh my gosh, like, thank God, because she had went through so much and it was such a traumatic event. Yeah. But then you look at the whole thing and it's like, bro, well then, so I guess after they both go to jail and like, you know, she goes to jail, he goes to jail, the boyfriend, she starts talking to like hundreds of dudes are writing her while she's in jail because they're like obsessed with the story and all this stuff. That happens well, this, every time. This guy, listen, so you know how they've been saying that her husband looks like her mom. No. You haven't seen that? Ooh, that's oh, gross. Okay, hold on. Because, no, it gets juicier than that. And I don't know if this is 100% true, so, like, don't fact check me on this if anybody, like, has seen this. But um, Gypsy Rose, mom and husband. So if you look at the pictures of, like, them comparing them, they look a lot alike. Like, look at that. Is that them? So this is that is, first one, them cropped together? No, like, hold on. Let me try to get you a picture of. We'll like, have to try to insert the picture and okay. the, the edit if we can. I don't know. So just look at the, like, so take the can. thing. Yeah, I'm trying to. So if you look, I'll find a good picture to throw up on the screen. But Oh, this is her when she was sick. Well, not sick, but when her mom just was Just look at the husband sick. compared oh, to yeah, the mom. No, 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 no. I see it right so away. So it gets juicier than just that, right? So apparently, Gypsy Rose's mom has, like, multiple kids. And a lot of the kids are, like, anonymous that she's Did the had. state pay to fix her teeth? I don't know. Because that's some shit that would piss me off. I'm not sure. But what do you mean? Like, when she was in prison, did the state, whichever state she was in prison, did they fix her teeth? Because that's tax money, dude. This shit's bullshit. Well, no, it's not bullshit because she needed her teeth fixed. I mean, her mom was the one who had much... I don't know. Psychopathic killer needs her teeth fixed? Well, no, but you have to, th- you have to like, take uh, into account the whole entire situation. Like, she literally was yeah. abused by her mom. Yeah. She was get- yeah, The yeah. reason her teeth are bad are be- is because her mom gave her all these medications she didn't need. She lost all of her teeth because she was on all these medications she didn't need. Like, it was her mom's fault with the munchkin by proxy, whatever it I get, is. They probably thought that she was actually going to be reintegrated into society, so it's like, you know. Well, she was, right. you know. Yeah. But I don't think that they, they did pay to fix her teeth. Like, she still has like all those Cosmetic silver. stuff. It's like, are, well, we doing, are we doing cosmetic medical work on prisoners? I don't know. But that's not the point of all this. The I point know. of this is that, <laughs> so apparently her mom has... um multiple kids that like okay her mom has siblings yes and one of them's last name was anderson which is ryan her husband's last name and the speculation is that that's her brother he's also from louisiana where she's from and on Uh. all the documents or whatever her mom like you can't tell who the kid is 
that but people are saying he looks just like her mom and they kind of look alike is this her long lost brother so what how does the what did the mom do initially she just like gave kids up for adoption then kept one i don't know like, like how does that work where are gypsy roses it makes sibling? sense when guys have kids that they don't have anything to do with but I don't know because – so Gypsy Rose has, like, a sister. I think that's her dad's kid. I don't – I have no idea. There's another juicy celebrity gossip thing I was going to bring up. What? Uh, so 21 Savage tried to – on Aiden Ross's stream, they went on. So what the way it started was 21 Savage had an album come out recently. So then he went on Kai Sennett is who's like the biggest streamer on Twitch. He went on Kai Simmons Kai Sennett's stream and they bet three hundred thousand dollars between them. So they were betting three hundred grand uh, on different video games. There's like four games. And Twenty One Savage won, won a bunch of money from Kai Sennett, and it was a whole big story. So then within like two days, Kai Sennett's going on Aiden Ross's stream and they're gambling for a half a million. So they're so but Twenty One Savage brought fake dice and and marked cards and and got caught out like on the stream got caught like cheating with marked cards and marked dice trying to cheat him and it's like dude you have a hundred million dollars and you're trying to cheat somebody out of a few hundred thousand dollars. Wait, who was Twenty One Savage? Yes, yes, and so wait, who was he trying to cheat? Aiden Ross. He was the cheating. streamer. Yeah, no, it's all it's all it's been big in like social like in social media stuff. So. He ends up within 24 hours of the stream coming out, apologizing to Aiden Ross and and like giving him the money back, right? And so then 21 Savage puts a deck of cards and dice on his website and sold them out over like a two day period and made a million dollars selling out these marked cards and fake dice and stuff. But he really was trying to cheat this dude out of money. No, 100 percent. Yeah, he went over there to cheat and win. He went over there to win. Like he wasn't taking a chance of losing. Any of his money. He went and over he there wasn't and gonna give that money back unless he got called out. He got it got it was bad. It was all over Instagram and TikTok. How do you like if you have that much money? I, w- I always talk about this with Kevin and stuff too. Like if I had multi millions of dollars, millions and millions and millions, right? First, I'd make sure my kids are straight. Me and the kids talk about this all the time. Like if I was ever a millionaire, they would all have fat bank accounts, they would all have houses when they grow like I would make sure they're set first. And then I'd make sure all the people in my life are good. And, like, yeah. I would want to, like, share. I'm one of those people who, like, I want to share the wealth. Like, I want all the I'm people sure in my circle. I'm sure Twilight does share with his family and friends. But I'm how sure. can you, like, scam somebody who's, like, not even on your level, dude? Like, no, I understand, I know, like, scamming Drake, so maybe. So, do you know who Academics is? Yeah. He's, like, the big. Uh, I what? follow him on Instagram, but I don't really know who he is. I just follow him for all the stuff he puts out because he's always putting out some good shit. Yeah. So, he got on the phone with Aiden Ross afterward and was talking to him. And he was like, look, bro. He's like, these rappers don't really fuck with you like that. You know what I mean? He's a white dude. Aiden's white. He's Jewish. He's like, these rappers don't fuck with you like that. They're looking at you like you're a bag. Like, you're, you can show up and get a bag from you for being on your stream, and that's it. He's like, the reason 21 was over there being straight up with Kai, Kai's black. He's like, he's just looked at him as another black dude. It's fair. It's straight up. He's messing with him because he's black. He's coming over to you, and he's just looking at you like a lick or a bag to get. He doesn't actually fuck with you. So he's over there. He literally tried to cheat him. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, but I mean, even with, like, that aside, like, that's how a lot of people, like, view the world, too. It's like, oh, like, she's got a soft spot. I've had people take advantage of me. Yeah, I know. You know, just because I'm, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a, I have a heart. Like, I, I care about people. Like, if you're close to me and, like, I care about you and you come, like, you know, whatever. But, like, even people who I, I'm not really close with, like, you know, who are just, like, in the same, like, category of me on social media or, like, you know, we know each other from online. Like, I've, I've been taken advantage of by all types of fucking people. Yeah. You know? Just because I'm a, I'm a lick. Yeah, exactly. I'm a softy. Got a big heart. But I'm not anymore. I'm a bit, I'm getting more into my bitch era. So that was pretty insane. And then to follow that up, Aiden Ross had Playboy Cardi come to the stream. And play, the Playboy Cardi was, the deal was Playboy Cardi came to do the stream. He was getting $2 million a Ferrari, which is only like 200 grams. So it was like $2.2 million and a private jet flight out there. Who was? Playboy Cardi. That but was his Who was payment. he giving it to? Aiden, 21 Savage. No. No. Aiden Ross is the streamer. Okay. He's the he's the poppin' streamer. Mm-hmm. So the deal was he's paying Playboy Cardi two million, a Ferrari, and a, and the private jet flight. That was the deal. To come and be on the stream. So he was supposed to be there at like eight PM. So it, it's like How t- much money is he making? Aiden Ross? Yeah. So much money. 
So you were paying somebody two million just to come on the stream mm -hmm. Playboy, and a Ferrari. Playboy Cardi, we're not. It's not anybody. Okay, he's not paying me two million to come on the stream. Playboy Cardi, who notoriously doesn't put himself in front of cameras. There's not interview footage with Playboy Cardi. There's nothing. You have like three times a year Playboy Cardi has someone leak a couple pictures. But that's it. Playboy Cardi doesn't get in a camera. Period. So for him to be doing it, it was a big deal. And Playboy Cardi is one of the people who has like cult fans. Like Playboy Cardi has millions of people who are like cult level fans of his. So Playboy Cardi showed up two and a half hours late with some fucking Ozempic heroin goons with him. They're like, dude, I wish I could show you this freaking Ozempic dude that he's with. <laughs> oh my God. Ate up. Looks like a zombie. Then he's, so Playboy Cardi's wearing like a full leather gimp suit and a mask and all this stuff. It was actually pretty crazy. But he only came on the stream for six minutes. They played three of his songs while he danced around. And then, he, and then Aiden was like, hey, man, I got something for you. And he showed him the money, gave him the money. Playboy Cardi handed it to one of the girls that he was with instantly. You can hear her over there playing with zippers and stuff. Two more minutes go by, and Playboy Cardi comes up to the microphone and says, he's like, 2024 music, which is what his album's coming out. He's like, I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you for the hospitality. Tells Aiden he's leaving and leaves. Takes the two million and leaves. Was that a big deal? Like, was Aiden mad about that? or The whole internet was pissed about it. Everyone's mad. You think Aiden was mad? I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to tell Playboy Cardi you're not leaving? <laughs> no, no. He literally, he was like, right. oh, you're leaving right now? He's like, all right, hold on. Slaps the mic, mutes it, walks him out. Comes back and literally starts calling, like, all this, like, uh, this persona shit that Playboy Cardi do does is lame and cringe. Who? Aiden did? After yeah. he leaves? Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was crazy. Pretty insane situation. Uh, apparently, Playboy Cardi made a statement because Aiden posted a, fa a screenshot of them on FaceTime and said that Playboy Cardi is going to come back and make it right because the internet is just literally dragging this dude. They're all well, like, dude, you're 30 and you still act like you're some weird vampire. Grow the fuck up. Like, yeah. Like you got two kids and you're wearing a gimp suit on stream. Get the fuck out of here. Well, also, if you have somebody that's paying you two, $2 million to make an appearance, like make it count. Like make it like, and you so know. And so what Aiden was saying now, though, post everybody was talking about he got the $2 million. Aiden was saying it was $400,000 cash in the bag that he handed him and that he took with him. And that he didn't get the rest of the money. He didn't get the Ferrari. And they called him about the jet after they left. And he was like, fuck y'all. You're not getting the jet ride at all. Click. Fuck y'all. So it took 400000 in cash and dipped. That is insane. Does Playboy Cardi make money like that? Yeah. Like, I know there's different. Like, I always assumed that all rappers were balling, right? Like, before. But, like, I realize now that there's, like, levels to this. Like, Oh, yeah. Well, there's owning the masters and rights to your music, like, Future had six number one albums, and then he just sold the master. He owned the rights to his music, so he made all that money. He probably made $50 million, whatever, during all that time, right? He just sold his catalog to, like, Universal Music Group for $75 million. Does that mean all his music is off TikTok now? I don't know if it was Universal Music. Mm. He sold it to somebody purchased Future's entire catalog for $75 million. So, yeah, there is levels to this shit. Like, people laugh about uh, Meek Mill only having, like, $20 million. That's a lot of money. I know, I know. But when they talk about rappers, they act, all the rappers act like they're super rich. So people, like, laugh about Meek Mill's money and stuff. Nicki Minaj, have you... Dude, can we please talk she's about She's always... Nicki? Her brand money has been what's crazy. It's, lying she's on your dead made, mama. On your dead mama. Lying on your dead mama. I don't think Nicki made money mama. from music. I think she... I think her image. I think her... Are you kidding me? No, I know. She could, like, make a Barbie doll shoes or whatever and make 20 million. Or she had a perfume and made 50 million. I think Nicki Minaj's brand, her name and brand, has made her crazy money. I just don't think it was her music. It was her music. It, it was her music also. Nah, she had crazy we fans that would buy all stats. her stuff. <coughs> she's yeah, only had, like, what? Like, maybe three or four albums? I don't know how many albums she's had, but listen. Okay. She's one of the biggest pop, pop stars. I mean, she's up there with Drake. No. Yeah. No, that's literally stopped. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's that's actually a really funny comparison to me. Wait, hold on. Nicki Minaj, um, worth off music. Nicki used to rap about how much money Drake had. She's Nicki got a bar. Minaj has a net worth of around 150 million. And I'm saying it's not from her music. She's been she's had an amazing brand. Like, her whole life, she's been able to sell anything. If they put her in a picture of something, it's sold. Okay, so I guess maybe you're right. Like, yeah. her music is making her about, I don't know, like 10 to $20 million a year. Right. 
So yeah, it is like she her... probably made a hundred million off of like the brand deals. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No. But anyways, so her sh- she goes back. I don't know if I talked to you about this, but like I've so been, I'm up on the Meg stuff. The Meg, the Meg, the Stallion, and mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj. So like she goes. I, this is I the was thing. a huge Tory Lanez fan. So like I'm a huge fan of Tory Lanez music. This is the thing that like boggles my mind about Nicki Minaj. Okay. You are so popular. You're so famous. You have so much money. You could probably have almost anybody that you wanted, you know, who's like, pop, like, you know what I mean? Like, you could have someone big. Like, you know, you could, you, you're, you're fit. The fish in the sea for you are like crazy. Like, you could be with celebrities. You could be with all types of dudes. Who says she's not? What do you mean? I'm just saying, like, she's, think about the power she has in that relationship with her husband. Well, She's that's compri- what, she probably does whatever she wants. Let's be serious. So then she goes back home a couple years ago to hand out turkeys for Thanksgiving. And she ends up meeting some dude she used to date in high school. And, like, who's a convicted, like, predator. It's such a common story, though. And then I just give Nikki the credit for having the morals. I think she married him to just have the father of her child in her life. W- but why would you pick somebody who's literally a sex him. offender? I don't think she picked him. I think she... Remet him, doesn't know anything about his past, falls in love, has a kid. Her brother, then Nicki Minaj's brother, is serving like a life sentence for molesting I an 11 about that year old. Too. I actually I haven't thought about that for a few years. This is all like new to me because, like, once, and this is gonna sound terrible, but like, once Cardi B blew up, like, I became like a major Cardi fan. But I always had love for Nicki because Nicki was like a huge part of my childhood. Like, you know, all of her, so- like, super bass, like, all of those songs, like, Dude. uh, what is that other Nicki Minaj song? Nicki Minaj is an icon. Yeah. Um, she opened the door for every female rapper now. Yeah. I don't think it, no female got respect in rap until her. Yeah, but you know what's crazy? Like, all this beef between her and Meg Thee Maybe Stallion. Maybe Queen Latifah did. Meg Thee Stallion's song wasn't even necessarily directed at Nicki Minaj. Like, talking about Megan's Law, it wasn't even, like, a direct, like, comment towards Nicki Minaj. I it think was just... Megan's Law. Megan's mom had said something like, uh, what was she saying? Megan's mom is dead. No. Megan's dead, I think. Huh? Meg the Stallion? No, I'm not talking about Meg the Stallion. So Megan's Law is named after a real child. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, well, the, the real child's mother weighed in her opinion even on this. What did she like, say? Told I didn't, Meg I the Stallion that. to shut the fuck up and quit using her daughter's name and shit. Oh, really? Yeah, I told her to shut the fuck up. That's crazy. I don't think that she directed that at Nikki though. Like in the song, like I think that she was just talking about like. You I'm know. not listening to any of them songs. What <clears throat> Meg the Stallion? Or Nicki Minaj? You don't like Meg the Stallion? Please no. Are you kidding me? I just told you I'm actually a very big Tory Lanez fan. So a lot of people just don't know anything about Tory Lanez. He's had so many albums and so many mixtapes, and he's constantly like singing. Like he does like R and B music, and he does like really deep shit. You don't have to pick a side because of Tory Lanez. And- I do. Um, I don't <laughs> think Tory Lanez shot her. Get the fuck real. She didn't even have a hole in her foot. She didn't get shot. I don't believe it. I don't think Tory Lanez oh, should yeah. be in prison. I think Megan's a liar. Is, she still in, is he still in prison? Yeah, he actually got sentenced to like eight to ten years in prison. Yes. Oh. Tory Lanez is doing federal prison time. And I, I don't think he should be. That. And I don't think Megan's a good person. She's Uh-oh. a piece of shit. Oh really? Yeah, dude. Fuck Wait, her. why did he go to prison for shooting, for shooting her in the Megan foot? in the foot? Yeah. You were like, ra- I remember like hearing you have rant sessions about this. See, I'm out of the loop of a lot of stuff. Free Tory Lanez. <laughs> Wait, did he really? How did how did he get sentenced if he didn't actually shoot her? Tory Lanez. Um, because so the problem is that uh, Tory just wouldn't snitch on the fact that uh, Megan's friend is pro- is more than likely who shot her. The other girl that was with Megan is more than likely who actually fired the gun that hit her foot. Or I think the bullet probably like caused some ricochet damage to her foot. I don't think she didn't have a hole in her foot. She didn't have a bullet wound in her foot. There's no there's no bullet wound in Megan's foot. Nicki so, Minaj made a song called Bigfoot. I know, which is amazing because when you look at it, Megan Stallion's like six two and wears a men's size thirteen. She's five <laughs> ten. That's pretty fucking tall. I'm five <laughs> nine. Yeah, so five ten's pretty. You're tall. <laughs> I've got a big foot. I wear size ten. And women's. I don't care. What's an eight and a half in men's? By Meg the Stallion is like, what? Popping. I don't give. A, I don't care. She's popping. Yeah, I love her I music. Wonder, I love. I love that. I hope it lasts forever. Yeah, I love her music and I no, love her. Yes, I do. You're full of it. I'm not full of it. I really do. But I didn't really like. I don't know any of the Tory Lanes and the Meg the Stallion drama. I just yeah, and you know I think Nikki's an icon. So you know. 
because she's married to a predator. An icon? That's not what. What does that got to do with who she's married to? I'm just talking about her career, like music. I don't know. Was. I'm sorry, but she's if iconic. you if you tried to rape somebody like a couple years ago or whatever, hey, yo, pause. If you tried to rape somebody like before I met you and I found out, I would leave you. Yeah, that's great and all. I don't give a shit about that. Oh. I'm just talking about like Nikki in general, like an like, iconic music career. Her as so a person. influential. Yeah, she's like the honestly like so influential to music and everything, and I think that's great. What has Megan done? Nothing but get another innocent black dude in jail. Fuck her. Um, Tory Lanez, free him. At his trial for the shooting of Meg the Stallion in December of 2022, yeah. Lanes was found guilty of all felony charges. Of all three thing. felony charges. He got screwed because they, they did it to way away her friend's testimony got sealed and she didn't have to testify in court. Like, if she would have had to testify in court, then she would have had to come clean about shit or lie about it. So she didn't have to, so her friend didn't have to testify and incriminate herself. So that's the reason Tori's in prison. Is he still in jail? Dog, he's doing like an eight to 10 year sentence. Dang, Tory Lanez transferred to state pit prison in California. Yeah, he's doing prison in the U.S. He's a Canadian citizen. For shooting her in a foot, she's, he's getting eight years? I don't know. I think it was eight to ten years, yeah. Dang. So if you shoot me in the foot, ten years. Uh, the kneecap or below is not attempted murder. Mm. It's assault with a deadly weapon. Unless it was self-defense. Right. Right. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting any ideas. I'm just saying. Just let y'all know you can, you know, you won't get attempted murder if you shoot somebody in the leg. Well, don't shoot anybody in the leg, y'all. Don't do that. But yeah, I mean, I just thought that that Meg the Stallion and Nicki Minaj drama was crazy because I had no idea that Nicki was married to some like weirdo. Like that's what he is to me. Like she could have done better. And she could have had kids obvious. with somebody else. Yeah, I think that that I think that that it goes without saying. Like obviously, she but she's with a dude from her hometown. But anytime anybody ever speaks bad about, like you know how you're saying like that, she probably does like go out and still do what she wants with like whoever the hell she wants, like whatever. But like at the same time, if she's doing that, why does she get so mad anytime somebody speaks bad about her husband? Like she like comes like she has became so like she goes live. She went live for like almost 24 hours one day, like when this Meg the Stallion drama was going on. And, like, she was calling Nikki out for being, like, with the predator or whatever, like a mm-hmm. sex offender. I don't know if predator is the right. I keep using the term predator. But Your one old friend is still with that dude, uh, the team mom girl. She's still with Cray Cray, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. She stays with Cray Cray. That's I don't a know, whole... Sometimes you don't know what it is about love, dude. Humans and love is weird. Honestly, though, you <laughs> were friends with Cray Cray. No, I wasn't. You all <laughs> forced it. You all forced me to hang out with him one time. <laughs> and he was fucking nuts. I couldn't wait to leave. No. He was like trying to get us to stay for dinner. I was like, dog, we gotta go. <laughs> I had fun with her that day though. You know, like she was like she was a good friend until it got a little bit crazy. And then I like my moral like I have to be friends with people who like my moral compass aligns with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like my moral compass as a mom is like pretty high. Like my bar like my standards for being a mother is like pretty high. Like my kids come before like anything else that I'm doing in life. Some people so, are unwell. So whenever, like, you know, you're friends with somebody who's in the public eye and is constantly getting ripped apart for, like, her choices as a mother, (laughs) it's hard to, like, I can't stick up for you all the time, girl. Like, you're kind of fucking up. Like, that's kind of crazy. You had to quit sticking up for her quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, like, a week of sticking up for her, and then you're like, yeah, let me bow out of this one. Yeah, because I don't agree. Like, and that's, like, and it wasn't even the fact that, like, I didn't like her or something. It was just, like, I, I just don't morally align with you. And, like, that's just how it is. You got to surround yourself with people who have the same values as you, you know? That's super important in life. Bruh. We visited somebody who was on national TV for like five seasons. No, 10 years. Yeah, 10 years of being on television. And we had to go to bumfuck North Carolina to a double wide trailer on blocks. Don't you fucking even. No, it was not a double. It was a, a green nice. pool and the grass wasn't cut. <laughs> And Damn they had it. fucking Stop, Cody. They had wild dogs and wild chickens running around. No, it no. was a fucking nightmare. I don't remember the chickens. You don't remember the chicken? He was cooking oh, one yeah. of them. <laughs> he fucking cooked one of them. He just wrung its neck the day before. He fucking cooked one of his pets. For I don't us. think that. I think to, it was a grocery. Y'all want to stay for. No. <laughs> no. I don't want to eat your pet chicken with you. You fucking psycho. <laughs> 
Oh my god. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. But yeah, I mean, people that uh, will know exactly who we're talking. About. Yeah, that was. And uh, now, dude, did you see like a few months ago he put out a video of himself wearing camo in the woods? What was that song called? I Hold don't on. remember, but she was the one who you could at the very beginning of the video you heard her say, "Okay, go." My favorite like, you part. You couldn't crop the "Okay, go." Out. My favorite part of that <laughs> video was Janelle twerking in it. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm hmm. I like, you, you wouldn't want to see me in these woods. Yeah, okay, you but. You wouldn't want to see me in these woods. Wait, I need to find it. Okay, Hold on, wait. This is a six foot five white dude. <laughs> <laughs> in case y'all were wondering what he looks like. Oh, my i remember when i first saw that shit like it rotted in my brain i was like i didn't i couldn't i was like I heard, cody look what our friends are doing it's not our friends <laughs> i just about said her name i saw a girl say okay go and then him start doing that shit wearing like full camo in the woods but you're like 10 feet from your house bro you live in the woods dog you're not in the woods bro it's your backyard <laughs> dog this is your yard <laughs> Just, and just because we showed up, he spent the whole time on the phone trying to get someone out there to cut the grass. I think that that was like a thing. Like they were, somebody came out while we were there and started. I'm saying. Yeah. Too much. That was a good time in but our life. Appreciate though. the hospitality though. Yeah. We had fun over there. Thanks for letting me swim in your pool. <laughs> Zelma was vibing and thriving. It's just too easy to make fun of y'all now. Yeah. But anyways. All right. Love y'all. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go get Panera Bread. All right, but yeah, thank you for coming to this uh, episode of the Dicey Digest, um, and we will see you guys next time. I had a great time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs>